Coordinator and player day here at Nebraska football. Hello, everybody. I'm Sam McEwen along with Wilson Moore for the Omaha World Herald and Husker Extra. We got a whole bunch of guys today. We got a ton of players and we got both coordinators. Tony White, the defensive coordinator with the big task this week of slowing down Shadur Sanders and those receivers. What did White have to say about the Buffaloes? Yeah, he talked about, you know, how I think uh, uh, Colorado's not going to try to fool you. We know what Colorado is going to do. Nebraska knows what Colorado is going to do. Tony White knows what Colorado is going to do. They're going to get their athletes out in space. Uh, Shadur Sanders is going to make plays. Travis Hunter and Jimmy Horn are going to make plays too. So I think that was about what was expected, what Tony White said, just that they're not going to fool you. There are no tricks up their sleeve. You know, they're going to have a few more wrinkles probably than they put on film against North Dakota State. But for the most part, Colorado is comfortable saying these are our guys try to stop them and that's where Nebraska has its work cut out for it. Playground football a little bit not going to be a lot of elaborate plays that's absolutely right not a ton of play action or anything that's tricky about their play action they do have incredible receivers and of course Travis Hunter is at the top of that list he's a good cornerback too but I think he could play receiver in the NFL he's very physical he's wiry I wouldn't describe him as a 220 pound guy. He's not Justin Jefferson, but he's wiry and, he, and he's very effective at trying to get balls, especially in the red zone. Yeah, he wins, you know, on those jump balls, balls down the sideline. Whether he's playing receiver or cornerback, he seems to always win it. We saw how physical he was against North Dakota State. There were some plays that, you know, I think you could have made the case. He pushed off, got a little handsy with the cornerback but other plays like down in the front corner of the end zone I've watched the highlight of that maybe a dozen times I still don't know how he reached around the cornerback and managed to get that so yeah he's he's a player he played well last year when Nebraska traveled to Boulder and th there's no scenario I don't think where uh, Colorado wins without him playing well I think he's such a linchpin in everything they do he's the most important player, maybe even more important to that offense than Shadur. I think you can make a case. Uh, so, yeah, he's. Um, I think he's 1A on who you prepare for if you're Nebraska. And I think, you know, Tommy Hill's probably a guy that's going to get Travis Hunter a lot, and Hill is a physical player for sure. But they've got other guys, like you mentioned, Horn, uh, Levante Wester, who's a transfer, who's, who's a really nice player, quick underneath. They don't have Dylan Edwards as a running back anymore. He went to K-State, but they do have other guys that can come in. Uh, Shadur Sanders is somebody who I think evokes a lot of respect. He's probably going to be a first-round NFL draft pick. I was struck, though, in talking to Makai Bayer out here on the side about Sanders, and there's a feeling that like one of the things that Sanders does really well, the superpower he has, is he just kind of goes back and forth around the field like he doesn't necessarily scramble for first downs but he buys a lot of time I remember last year Ty Robinson sort of chasing him around like a Kodiak bear not grabbing him <laughs> and Sanders throwing for a big play it was really something to watch but Bayer said we got a plan for that oh you got a plan for that they sacked him nine times last year they have a lot of pressure but Sanders also beat them um, from the flip side of the coin what do you think of what Dylan Riola had to say today he he is a unique guy he's got a lot of confidence for a freshman Came in there with the headband. He'd just gotten done with the workout. He just seems like he's in control for 19 years old. Absolutely, yeah. I don't think you can be in the position he's gotten himself to without the level of confidence that's maybe uncommon for a 19-year-old. There aren't a whole lot of true freshmen starting for Power 5, Power 4 uh, programs. So, yeah, he he came in. I think, you know, we're it's interesting because we're seeing the progress he's going through, and that's not just on the field. We're seeing him deal with everything for the first time, and it's a, it makes for a fascinating subplot throughout the season. This is going to be his first rivalry game. This is his first game where all eyes are on him. You know, national TV, Friday night, one of the, you know, the marquee game of that night, that time slot. So we're seeing how he handles everything in real time. It makes for an interesting kind of subplot throughout the season. It certainly will. Colt McCoy in town to be the analyst for NBC on Saturday night, that should be pretty darn interesting. A couple other odds and ends. So, again, Bayer, I asked him, I said, you know, is it a little easier to prepare for Shadur Sanders now that, you know, Dylan is in there throwing the football in practice versus no offense to the other guys, the other guys from last year? And Bayer says, don't compare Dylan Raiola to Shadur Sanders. Don't do that. Dylan's a different man. And then he goes on in a, another interview that I, that I had with him. He's like, you know, Dylan is like Patrick Mahomes. So the confidence that this defense has in Raiola is just unique. 
and they believe in him. Um, now, whether or not he's able to deliver the way that he did against UTEP, I suppose we'll see. Good conversation out here with Carter Nelson, too. He's a bright guy. Uh, Ainsworth product who played his first game, three catches for 29 yards. He noted that uh, he's still learning how to do all of this. He's only been really in training camp for a month and a half. He wasn't here for spring camp. So um, I think that's a guy that could take a big jump in week two. Anything else jump out at you about either Marcus Satterfield or any of the coordinators or any of the players who we spoke to? Yeah, I think just, you know, how measured everyone was, and that was not a surprise. I think teams tend to take after their coach, and that's the way Matt Rule wants things. You know, you knew coming in no one was going to say, oh, yeah, you know, it's Colorado. We hate those guys. There's a, you knew that wasn't going to happen. You knew everyone was going to be pretty measured. I think especially just these days people are pretty careful with their words. So nothing real outlandish, which is always fun, but I don't think – None of that, which was pretty expected. Matt Rule on Monday. I got love in my heart. That was, that was a good one. I got love for you. I got love in my heart for you. Dion talked today. I, I think Dion said mostly positive things about Nebraska, too, by the way. He didn't throw anything on the bulletin board. But if he had, nobody would have been all that surprised, nor would it matter that much. One thing, one more thing. I, I asked Dylan, because he wasn't at the game last year. He was, a, he was in high school. Can you sense from your teammates how that game made them feel and the internal motivation they might have? And he took it to mean a question about rule. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I can tell it means a little bit more to him. But, you know, that he's, he's our coach and he's comporting himself and so on and so forth. But I found that interesting that he said that about rule. Um, I think this game means an awful lot internally inside the program. This is an important, important game. Nebraska has a team that can beat Colorado. It has a quarterback. It has an offense. And we'll see what happens. Okay, for Wilson Moore, I'm Sam McCune with the Omaha World Herald and Husker Extra. Thanks, Nebraska fans.